prepare to see this game over and over and over again because I ain't stopping for no man. Mage Knight 404 here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Last time, we entered Chapter 4, a distant voice, and we're in the base section. I guess I should talk more about the base section, even though it's pretty much virtually the same thing as it is in FE9, but for the newcomers, I think I'll spare a few bones. Items is pretty much the same as before, as it was before. You get to trade stuff, take less for weapons, put stuff in the convoy, give all of them to the convoy. Equip stuff, unequip stuff, drop stuff, new stuff. You got it, you got it. It's all here. It's all real. It's all relative. Here you go, Laura, it's for you. shop lets you buy stuff, you can buy weapons, which are now neatly arranged depending on category, which is a huge boon, in my opinion. Very nice. We go to the shop, where Aimee sells staves, items, and here's something new, bargains. Chap from chapter to chapter now. Oh, hold on a second. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Alright, from a chapter to chapter basis, uh, I mean, will have some pretty pretty rare and nifty stuff on sale that you can grab for pretty much a one-time only deal. So you can only really get these once. The, the list is going to keep changing from chapter to chapter, and you're going to find some pretty nice stuff here. Be sure to check this every chapter. Who knows? You might find something you like. Selling items and forging. There's a little more to forging, but we'll talk more about that later. Now we go to manage. Go to reward experience points. It works pretty much the same as it does in FE9. You offer points. Except the points in this game are a lot more high-end than it is in Path of Radiance. Oh, this shit is high-end. Fucking Radiant Dawn. HP, Strength, Skill. The kicker about one's experience in this game is that when you level up using it, you only gain three stats. Three stats. No more, no less. Three stats. That's how one's experience works. The thing about this is that if one people might complain, like, only three stats, that's retarded. Actually, I think that's kind of cool, but it also, it's really abusable. Why? Well, start using it once you start maxing stats out. Once you start maxing a couple stats out, using bonus experience will help raise the ailing stats. So you can start raising the lower stats, like, Ed, like once once Edward's skill and speed max out, what you focus on is like his defense or something, which is very nice, and kind of broken at the same time, because you can make some pretty awesome units this way if you're very lucky. But that's bonus experience. Now we're going to skills. Skills work the same way, giving skills work the same way in Path Rage, you can give skills or you can take skills. Characters. Something special. Let's see, it's usually an arrow for instance. He comes with a cancel skill, right? Cancel normally costs 10, but he gets it for free. If a character comes with a skill, this doesn't work for all skills, but if the character comes with a skill, they usually don't have to pay capacity for it. Which is very nice. It just basically gives them a free skill. However, if you remove the skill, it's not gone. In fact, it goes to in fact, it just, it just becomes a scroll that you can give to anyone you want to. Give it to Edward. And I'll give the this one to Micaiah. If you decide to give that give that scroll back to the character, they won't have it for free anymore. They'll have to pay for it again. Them's the breaks. Now we're going to go into supports. Oh boy, supports. There's a big pro and a big con about supports. Well, 
this game. The pro? Anyone can support with anyone else. That's the pro. The con? You can only have one support at a time. As opposed to having respectable five supports per character, as, other, as per other Fire Emblem games. Like, if I wanted to have uh, Nolan support with Micaiah, she'd have to forfeit her support with her ace support with Sav. Which is pretty stupid, in my opinion. But that's how that works. You can make some pretty awesome support conversations, though, depending on the affinity bonuses. We'll go more into that another time. Now we go over the info, com info conversation. Here, people post up stuff for you to read. And there's and they usually have importance factors. If they're one star, you're just going to get some useful useful um, in, information about the character or something. If they're two stars, they're going to they're going to give you some pretty helpful information about a mechanic or something that pertains to a chapter. And if it's three stars, you're bound to get something out of it, whether it's an item, money, or even a new character. Not always the case, though, as you will see with this conversation. Anyway, let's go in town. Sav, you noticed? Yes, ever since we arrived here. Huh, what did they notice? What should we do? Hmm, I can't sense any malice. Whoever it is doesn't seem to mean us any harm, but... Yes, let's do it. Alright, one, three then. One, two, three! Ah! Hey! Oh, wow, what's this? There, now we can see your face! Oh, yes. Surprising, isn't it, Saw? She's a girl. Ooh. I'm sorry. No, wait. Please don't run. My name's Mikaya. Don't be afraid. Have you gone mad? Don't tell her your name. We're on the run, remember? It's alright. She's not after us. Huh. Looks like she was eavesdropping. This is my brother, Saw. We're from Navasa. Brother? <laughs> For some reason, I don't buy that. Maybe it's because of the fact that she hesitated, but whatever. Oh, uh, hi there. And you are? I'm Meg. What are you doing out here in the edge of the desert? I'm looking for someone. Someone very important. Someone close to my heart. Aw, that's nice. All by yourself? Yes. You're meeting someone way out here? I'm not sure exactly. All I know is that this is where he came before he disappeared. I thought maybe he went to the desert. What a coincidence. We're also looking for someone in the desert. Would you like to come along? Really? Are you sure? Of course. Oh, thank you! I've been so lonely since I left Crimea on my own. You came all the way from Crimea? I'm surprised you made it this far. That's it then. Welcome aboard, Meg. You're one of us now. Oh uh, boy. Oh uh, boy. More on that later. I'm with the merchants. Hey, it's Ivy Mustard. Oh, there you are. Can we have a word with you? I mean, Mustin, how may I help you? Relax, honey, I'm just here to tell you about our business. You like to shop, don't you? Let me guess, you want to sell us weapons and other items, am I right? That's right, our inventory changes depending on where we are and what time it is. One thing's always the same, we're guaranteed fair prices, so stop by wherever you can. Do you carry tomes? Yep, fire, thunder, wind, light. Got you all your basics covered. Hmm, huh, no dark, wonder why. My shop also has lots of staves and medicine. Oh, and I recently made some... Key connections! Oh, I carry some very rare items. Hmm... I find that dubious. But this is what I was talking about earlier, about the bargain section. They're one of a kind and very valuable. You should come have a look. Rare weapons, too. Honestly, you should buy them some, or some, some, bleh, before someone else does. At these prices, they're bound to so quickly. Well, that's our spiel. Thanks for listening. Do come by. We'll be waiting. Indeed. Now for more merchants. Give me a minute. Okay, go. Well, hello. Don't mind us. We won't take a, but a moment of your time. George and Daniel, how you doing? Hello, George. Hello, Daniel. We just want to tell you a little about what we can do for you. I've already told her. George will buy us from us any items or weapons we no longer need. And Daniel... Hey! Excuse me, but we're here talking to Micaiah. Not to some stuffy know-it-all but George! Don't be rude. I'm sorry about that, Soth. And anyway, we just want to tell you about some changes we made to our business. Alright then, I'll keep my mouth shut as long as Daniel is talking. Thank you. So, what do you have, Daniel? Hey, thanks for asking. 
I've got a guy who's a master blacksmith. He makes weapons you wouldn't believe, and they aren't available anywhere else. Hey, that's thanks a lot, George. I make weapons too. Pretty good ones, if I do say so myself. It's just, you know, customs have been extremely tight lately. Raw materials are so hard to come by. Which reminds me, if you ever have weapons you don't need, would you sell them to us? Yes, please. Actually, even better. Sell me your weapons, and I'll give them to Daniel. Then he can smelt them down and use the steel for newer, shinier pieces. It costs some money to upgrade weapons, but... Hey, let's face it. It's worth the money. Owning a custom-made weapon lets you up from the common soldier. Oh boy, I can tell you that much from playing FE5 alone. Oh, here's a one-time-only deal. I won't even charge you for materials in your first upgrade. Pretty nice, huh? Now you have to know what's all to come by. Got that, Micaiah? Um, yes, thank you. One last thing. If you ever bring me a coin, I'll give you the bonus of whatever I'm making for you. Yeah, remember those coins that didn't do anything except fill up your inventory space of half of idiots? They have a use now in this game! Joy! They're very rare, so be sure to hang on to them. Don't sell them to some stranger. Alright, you didn't notice you didn't get anything about, about out of this one. That's because it's something that kinda got lost in localization. In the Japanese version of this game, when you... In order to forge something, you need something called forging points. Uh... For, you get you obtain forging points by selling off your weapons and items and, and stuff. Uh, no, just weapons. By selling off your weapons to George, and you get forging points out of it depending on the weapon rank that it was. I believe you need 50 in order to make, a, in order to be able to forge a weapon in the Japanese version. This was removed entirely in the North American and European releases of this game. So this is just a thing that was kind of lost in localization. Pay it no mind whatsoever. Uh, from Kurth. What are you doing out here, Kurth? Hello, Mikaya. Pay me no mind, I'm just watching the desert. How the wind changes the sandscape, the ebb and flow of the dunes, like a giant like giant swells in the ocean. I find it mesmerizing. Is this your first time in the desert? Yes, my homeland is ringed with mountains. Everything about Dane looks new and curious to my eyes. I see. You've not asked. I'm sorry? You've not asked about me who I am or where I'm from. Not just you, Micaiah, but the others as well. No one seeks to know who I am. You seem to not want to talk about yourself. Are you- am I right? Yes, quite right. That's why no one asks. People can tell when someone wants privacy. Many of us desire privacy, too. Kurth, you're not our enemy. I know that much. You're kind and gentle. That is all I need to know. Thank you. Huh. Now for the library. Library records show you the records of the chapter. <laughs> Whoa, excuse me. Sorry about that. Shows you the MP MVP of the chapter and how much bonus experience you've gained. Terms checks in about character profiles and terminology of the game. And the character shows a detailed character map. As you see, this is pretty full because I've beaten the game so many damn times.